I want to talk to you about a God who restores, restoring God. I have always preached that the most important move you ever make in your lifetime is the move you make right after you fail God. The devil will move in immediately as the accuser, and he will throw every, like a strategist in uh, warfare, he will gather all of his artillery, he will do everything within his power to come against you and lie to you, and he'll say, you of all people, you failed God, look what you did, you're a phony, he will throw everything that he possibly can at you, because the Bible said he's an accuser of the brethren. Some of you are being bombarded right now, or this past week, or today even by the devil's lies. You, you failed in some area in your life, and this is what I want to talk to. I want to talk to failures. I want to talk to people who have grieved the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to those who are fighting a losing battle against sin. I have an echo up here, and I need to go down just a little bit, please, on that. I want to take the life of Peter... And I want to show you, you know, I'm, this, is, is it this, Mike? I need to turn my, um, no matter what you have done, no matter how you have failed God, I have seen this over the years, it's absolutely mind-boggling to me, how the Lord will restore people. I, I have known of evangelists who have fallen deep into sin. These, some of them were my dear friends. And some of them, God speaks to my heart and he speaks to other pastors and go to them and restore them and just love them and they're restored quickly. Others, the Lord will say, don't touch them, don't go near them because there's not a repentant heart. Because where there's a repentant heart, God stirs up the hearts of people. He stirs up all kinds of uh, love. He does miracle after miracle in restoring. Folks, we serve a God who restores. God is not mad at you when you fall. Remember that. He's not your judge right now. He's your savior. One day he will be the judge, but right now, and I know in my heart, as sure as I know my name, God is trying to save some people here tonight that are are feeling that you will never make it and that you have grieved God. Some of you may even feel you, you have grieved the Holy Spirit or even on the brink of committing the unpardonable sin. And I want you to hear this comforting, healing word from the Holy Spirit. In the past month, I've been praying that God would restore over 1,000 backsliders who have slipped and drifted away. Whether they come to this church or not, is that a, it, that's not the important issue. But that God would restore and heal. How many believe God is a restorer of broken hearts? Amen. Now, Peter failed the Lord under the best of spiritual conditions. No man had more light, no man had better conditions than Peter. You think how blessed this man was. If you think it's a blessing to sit in Times Square Church and hear a strong and pure word, think of what this man said under. He touched the word of God. Literally, Jesus was the word of God. He touched him. The scripture says, we have seen with our eyes, but we have looked upon and our hands were handled the word of life. We have handled, he said, we have touched the living God. In John 17, just uh, in Jesus' last prayer, he, he prayed this, Lord, for Father, I have manifest or revealed thy name unto them. Now, you can substitute Peter's name in this, and you, you begin to understand the kind of ministry that this man said under. I have given unto them the word which thou gavest me. I have prayed for them which thou hast given to me. The glory thou gavest me, I have given them. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one. Now, this is the ministry that Peter said under. He said under the living ministry of the living word. This great spiritual blessings made Peter to believe he would never fail the Lord. I want you to go with me, please, to Mark the 14th chapter. And hear the words of Peter himself. Mark the 14th chapter. I'd like to hear the rustling of the leaves. Fourteenth chapter, Mark. Go to verse. Uh, start with verse twenty-six with me, if you will, please. Uh, I want to start reading uh, at uh, verse twenty-six. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. 
But after that I'm risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Now folks, stop here for just a minute. Look, think of what Peter is saying. He's saying, Lord, though all the house of Cornelius fail you, because he'd led that house uh, into the Holy Spirit, Cornelius and all his house, Lazarus may let you down, Mary and Martha may let you down, and all of these that have been saved and converted under your ministry in the past two and a half, three years, they may all fail you. All your other apostles, all your other disciples can fail you, but I'm not going to fail you. Everyone else may fail you. There was something he was, he was evidently thinking to himself, I have been so close to, I've seen so much of Jesus. I've been on the Mount of Transfiguration. I saw uh, Moses and Elijah. He said, I, I saw the glory of God. This man experienced so much of the glory of the Lord. And he had this spiritual pride in him that he would never fail God. Folks, that's a dangerous condition. Dangerous that you would, you would think, well, I have so much of God, I walk with him so long. He said, take, the Bible says, take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. Folks, it's a horrible kind of spiritual pride to think, I will never fail God. Everyone else may, but I will not fail God. I've heard people say that, I will never fail God. I will never. That's exactly what Peter said. All others may forsake you, but I will not. And he, he is writing off the entire uh, uh, Christian population, those who believe in Jesus Christ. That they all fail you, Lord, but not I. They may, but not I. God, keep that out of my heart. God, keep that out of your heart. Keep you humble and broken before the Lord at all times. Because of this man who said under this ministry could do what he did under all of this light. Do you think you're any stronger than the Apostle Peter? Take heed, he said, when you think you stand lest you fall. And he, he, he had this sense that he was beyond the possibility of failing the Master. And Peter's battle was not with lust. It wasn't even a lack of love for Jesus that caused him to fail. In fact, Jesus said it was going to be his faith. He said, Peter, I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. Now, when Jesus is taken now before uh, this wicked crowd, this judging uh, denominational crowd, and really what Jesus went into was a religious trial. This was a church trial. This represented the Jewish church of the time. Now, I, I don't think Peter uh, denied the Lord because he was afraid. Because you remember in the garden, he took a sword and cut off the high priest's servant's ear. And he's ready there with a sword to fight the whole battle. It's not fear in Peter. And it's not a lack of love for Jesus. It was his faith. That was the battle Jesus prophesied he'd fight. And folks, this man was absolutely intimidated by that scene when he comes by the fire. Get this scene in your mind if you will please. Caiaphas, the high priest, in all of his royal robes and, and the sashes. And there sit the Sanhedrin and the scribes on, on the sides. And they are in session. And they come marching in in all of their robes and the tinkling of their bells. And here comes Caiaphas with his head held high. And it's quite a scene of pomp and ceremony. And it's really something when this high priest so revered by the Jewish nation lifts his voice before the Lamb of God and he said, I adjure you by the living God. Then he turns and says, This man speaks blasphemy. And it's so dignified. And it's, it's such ceremony. And Peter looks at that Lamb of God dressed in a just a simple robe. And there's something must have happened in Peter saying, could it be that all of this, all of these men could be wrong after all their sacrifices and all the law and all of the tradition of Israel? This lonely man that's about to be killed and all of his people in hiding is, is this the new kingdom? And his faith was shattered. And I believe it was because he was intimidated by the pomp and the ceremony of religion. And there are a lot of people that are intimidated by all of this. They, they, they say, well, God must be in this. Folks, you can go to, to some cathedrals and you can just be carried away with the pomp and the ceremony. It's really something to behold. It looks religious and it feels religious. But it doesn't change the heart. 
it doesn't change the heart. There are people who would never come in to Times Square Church because we don't have the organ. I mean, the big pipe organ is not here. We've had people tell us, when do you get your pipe organ? They want the pomp and they want the dignity. They would never dare clap their hands. They would never dare come into this church, a church and a theater. They, they, are, they are intimidated by the, all the trappings of religion. And their faith is based on that tradi on tradition alone. Folks, the best thing God can do is knock all the tradition out of us. Knock out all the tradition. And he starts a new tradition and that simple faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Peter is carried away by this and he denies his Lord three times. He says, I don't even know the man. Second time, have nothing to do with him. I don't know him. And the third time, he started cursing. A, a cursing came out of his mouth. I said, blankety blank, I don't know a man. Absolutely denied his Savior. <clears throat> Folks, we're seeing a man here now. But Paul the Apostle, by the way, said, For this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter leave on him to life everlasting. But I, I see Peter as being even a stronger example because Paul the Apostle, uh, he did not walk with Jesus. He did not have this personal contact that Peter did. The, the Lord is giving us an example here of someone who's had the light who has preached the gospel, who has been so close to the heart of Jesus, and yet he fails the Lord miserably. Now, I don't know where you are tonight and who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to those who knew the Lord. I'm talking to those who walked close to the Lord, who had a heart for God, and you sinned against light. You really sinned against light. And I'll tell you, that's the one that the devil goes after. The devil wanted to isolate Peter. On Peter went out in the mountains and started to weep. He was immediately repentant. repentant. He, he, he just broke and the devil was delighted. The devil was gleeful. And he, he had, I'm sure, a commission of... He had commissioned a host of demons to go after this man. Jesus said he was going to be uh, shaken, remember. He's going to be see, sieved by the enemy. The enemy is going to sieve him like a sift, sift him like wheat. And these demon powers up there sifting him and they're trying to tell him, you of all people, you can't get back. The whole nation is talking about what they knew who you, they knew you knew him. What about all your, dis, all the other disciples? What about all of the, the church that follows Jesus and all the disciples of John? Look how you have failed the Lord. You have brought reproach on the kingdom of God. The devils, you can be sure, hounded Peter. But I'll tell you what, there's no weapon in hell that can withstand a broken heart before the Lord. No weapon in hell can stand up against a broken heart. To this man, while well, looked at him, have broken heart and a contrite spirit. Hell shudders at people who break before the Holy Ghost. Peter broke before the Lord. He broke and he repented and demons ran in fright. Hallelujah. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how you failed the Lord. If you have a repented heart, you have a heart that's repenting, you say, God, I know what I did. I'm not trying to justify it. I'm not trying to hide it. I'm not trying to make excuses for what I did. Lord, I have sinned against you. I have grieved you. Folks, there's some of you sitting here now, and if the only way you're going to hear me is to right now say, Holy Spirit, let me hear it in my inner man. Let me hear it and say, it's me, Lord. It's not somebody else Brother David's preaching to. It's me. And I'm telling you now, I speak in the Spirit to some of you that are hearing me. That if you were honest with the Lord, you have failed God. If you only... Know it. If you only face it, you have failed God. I don't care if it's in your home, your marriage, your job, whatever it may be. I have failed God. I have not lived up to his word. I have not obeyed his commandments. Now, I'm not here to reprove you. I'm here to tell you that if you repent, you go before the Lord and say, show me my heart. Oh, God, let me look in the mirror. Let me see what I've done. And he, the only reason he brings the law, the only reason he'll thunder against you, the only reason he'll bring this word and cut you like a knife is to heal you. To heal us. 
Why does a surgeon bring the knife to the body? He didn't come to kill, he comes to cut the cancer. And the surgeon's here tonight. By the word of the living God, we're washed by the word of the Lord. And I know it in my heart. I know it. I know it. God is speaking to some who have terribly, awfully failed the Lord. It doesn't have to be some... It doesn't mean that you ran off to a porno movie. It doesn't mean that you got drunk or stuck or snorted cocaine or something. I'm talking about deeper things than that. A backsliding of the heart. Pride. Arrogant pride. Holding on to your rights. Saying, I'm right and, and I'm not going to move from my position. If you say that you're right and you're not going to move from your position, you will not face what Peter, you will not have the, the glory that Peter was about to enter into. You won't see God work in your life like he wants to. But because Peter was absolutely repented before the Lord, the devil could not say to Peter, the Lord has abandoned you. He knew better than that. The devil could not lie to Peter because when you open your heart to the Holy Spirit, when you come humbly to him, you say, Holy Spirit, I have grieved you. I've sinned against my Savior. I don't want this. I hate it. And I'm in a battle. I'm in a struggle. And I know in my heart, I don't want to live, I don't want to live like this and justify it so that I get used to it and no longer convicted over it. Because that's the danger. But you come to him with brokenness as Peter did. And I want you to know when you do that, God will move heaven and earth on your behalf. God will move instantly to restore you and to heal you. You say, Brother Dave, I'm beyond that. Everything is blown up in my face. God failed me. God let me down. Hear it, brother. He didn't let you down. He doesn't let anybody down who truly has a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Not because they're afraid of losing their reputation or their money or their livelihood. No. Folks, this is just burning in my spirit. God is trying to reach some people here tonight. Brokenness, contriteness, though, is not enough. Tears alone are not enough. He could have cried his heart out. He could have cried there for a month. And that's not going to do any good unless it eventuates, unless it comes out in a broken will. See, he, he didn't just deny the cross of Jesus. He denied his own cross. He not only turned against the cross of Jesus Christ, Peter, he turned against his own. Because, see, this man's always telling everybody how to do it. This man's always trying to lead. He doesn't know how to follow. He doesn't know how to be dependent on the Lord. He's even going to tell the Lord how to undertake his ministry. You don't have to go to the cross, Lord. I won't permit it. But on that hill, the tears brought into a place of brokenness. He said, Lord, I'm not going to lead anymore. I'm going to follow. I'm going to take up my cross. And folks, at that moment, Peter became wholly dependent on the Spirit of the living God. Wholly dependent. His will was completely broken. That was the victory on the hillside. And that's what enabled him to come back. I'm sure that people everywhere were talking about, I'm sure that those apostles, disciples, they were human beings. And the, the, when the word got out and they met together privately, said, did you hear what Peter did? He said he didn't even know him. No, these people had no right to get in because they're hiding out. They were scared to death. And, and can you imagine what it was like for Peter to come back and face those men he'd walk with? To face those who would be the 120 in the upper room? To face all of those people? But I would tell you something. God had so moved on their hearts. God was so anxious to restore this man because you see God had only a certain few witnesses to his resurrection and that's why Peter the first thing he says when he's restored he says we are all witnesses to his resurrection and that's why the Lord wouldn't let him go 
He said, you're a witness to my power, to the world. And that's why God won't let you go. Because you're a witness. You have experienced his healing power, his saving power. He's been good to you. You know who he is. You know his power. You know his resurrection. And you're a witness to the world. And he's got so few witnesses, he'll not let you go. Now he comes as those who are willing to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. And Peter becomes totally, absolutely dependent on the leading of the Lord. In fact, the last thing Jesus said to Peter was, Truly, truly, say to you, Peter, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. He's, he's saying, you were a self-willed man. But when you grow old and you stretch out your hands, someone else is going to gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. He's really talking now about, Peter, you're going to walk in total dependence on me. You're not going to go where you want to go. You're going to go where I lead you. Where I lead you. Folks, I'm not there yet. I haven't arrived. But I'm not where I used to be. In my will. I used to be one of the most stubborn preachers in America. And I had a will. Boy, he'd been chopping away at that will for a long time. And I said, God, take it all. Where I want to end up with no ambition of my own, no desires of my own, but be totally, wholly dependent upon the Holy Spirit, yielded to him. That's where he wants to bring you. That's where he wants to take his body. That's where he wants to take this church. So that no matter what happens to the city, whether it's the economy, whether the fires, when the fires break out, when the difficulties and the judgments come upon this city, you will not be moved. You will be anchored in Christ Jesus. You'll have a hold of something that'll take you. Hallelujah. So that even if this church were shut down for two months or three months, you would not backslide in that time. You would not be living in fear. That your faith would grow so that three months later when we met, the Holy Ghost would come down with such fire. You will have grown leaps and bounds, even though you weren't a part of what God was doing. Even though the church was shut down during that time. You would grow. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know something? I am led of the Holy... I'm going to obey the Holy Spirit. Patience. Minister to those who are hearing this now. The Lord just told me I don't have to take it any further. I've got two or three more pages of notes, but I'm not going to go into it. Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you right now to go fishing. And I want you to fish out every man, every woman, every young person in this building in front of me or behind me. Lord, who's honest enough to say... I want my will broken. And I want God to begin work in my life in a new way. Now look this way if you will, please. You've got to hear this if you don't hear anything else I say. I'm not interested in preaching a sermon. I'm not interested in, 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 in walking off this stage uh, believing I preached well or strong or anything else. I'm here in the demonstration power of the Holy Ghost. As a father in Christ. To plead for your soul. Up in the balcony. And here in the main floor. I know. I know the Holy Spirit. And I know when he's talking to me. There are some of you. That God has literally had to. Almost stop working your behalf. He's had to have you fenced in. He's got you just cornered. And he's doing it because he loves you. And he wants you to break through to a place in him now. If the word that I'm preaching to you, if the word I preach is for you, balcony, for anywhere in this building, hit this altar. And we're going to ask God to deliver you right now. God wants to start working on your behalf. God wants to move heaven and earth. He wants to change everything. He wants to take away all the things that are blocking tears and use it to break up the hardened ground. Those hot tears break up a lot of hard ground. 
Move in close, please. Can you move in as tight as you can, please? Make room for these that are coming. Just it's an inch, just a little bit tighter. Thank you. Okay. You still come when I'm talking? Lord, my heart's almost breaking. Because I know this has been, it's just been burning in me the last four or five hours that you are trying, you are doing everything divinely possible tonight to send people out of this church delivered from the bondage of fear. Oh God. And to bring back to healing those who feel they have failed you, like Peter. But Lord, all you're asking for is a broken heart, a contrite spirit. And repentance. You want us to repent. You want us to come to you now and say, Lord Jesus, I've failed you. And folks, I'll tell you something. If you'll open your heart, I mean open your heart tonight. I want everybody that's in the aisles, everybody came forward, raise both hands to the Lord right now. Raise your hands. And I want you just to reach out to him and tell him you love him. And I want you in your words to tell him you failed him. Say, Lord, I failed you. Tell him in your words and tell him what, tell him what it's all about right now. Lord, I failed you and I, I have got to have deliverance tonight. I want to be free. And Lord, I want you on my side working on my behalf. I want you to restore me completely. If you need a marriage restored, ask God for restoration of your marriage. You say, I'm not giving up on my home, my marriage. I want healing in my life, in my home. I want healing. Hallelujah. Father, we come against the lying spirits of hell. The principalities and powers of darkness that are trying to break hearts and homes. Devil, you're a liar. And we, we do not rail against you. The Holy Ghost comes against you. The Spirit of God comes against you. We stand in the name of the Lord and in the power and the might of His strength. The Lord has defeated you through the blood. And we proclaim that victory of the blood of Jesus tonight. God, restore and heal every heart here tonight, Lord, that's sinking. Everyone who would have to acknowledge, Lord, it, I've been failing you and I want to be restored. I want you working for me, Lord Jesus. I want your hand upon me. Now call upon him right now. Say, Lord, forgive me in your own words. Lord, forgive me right now. I repent. I repent, Lord, of my sins. I repent of what I've done. I repent of my spiritual laziness. I repent now in Jesus' name. Lord, I repent now. Folks, speak it out. Speak it out in the name of the Lord. And get it out of your system. Get it out of your heart. God, I am sorry. Jesus, forgive me. I truly repent. Have mercy, O Lord, upon me now. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Everybody came forward, pray this loud and clear. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. I need your help. I need your, I need your mercy. I, need your mercy. I, come I come to the throne of God. In this my hour of need, hour of need. I, confess I, I confess I failed you, but I'm not going to be afraid, to be afraid. because you're merciful, Lord. You're merciful. And I know you love me. And like Peter of old, who is restored, restore me completely now. Oh, Jesus, take my will and break it. I want to depend on you, Jesus. From now on, I depend on you. Thank you, Jesus. Now thank him and praise him right now. Lord, I thank you. I magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.